Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to discuss the one rule that every trader follows. If you think about it, everybody has a different way to invest. Uh, and sometimes they, they're kind of contradicting. So some people go for technical analysis, some people go for only fundamental, people study patterns, people study only the companies, people study only the news, uh, people short it, people go for long-term investments. You have multiple ways to figure how you want to invest, but only only one rule that everybody follows. It's pretty much how to limit their losses, because that's pretty much the one thing that could definitely wipe you out in one hit. So in today's video, we're going to discuss exactly this, how to limit your risk when it comes to losses. So to better understand why uh, managing your risk is so important, I'm just going to put on the screen a small graph that I made in Excel. And this will show you guys why minimizing your losses is so important. So I have up on the screen uh, pretty much in 5% increments. And in the lower uh, area, I'm going to show you guys 99%. So if you lose 5%, this year, well, next year you need to make pretty much 5.3%, uh, which is not bad. But look at this, five, uh, if you lose 50% this year, next year you need to double your money. And this is where things kind of get really complicated because it's not uh, sustainable to think that you got, that anybody could double their money uh, year after year if they make a big loss because uh, the more, recovery you need to make the more riskier uh, moves you kind of make in the market and the more riskier moves the bigger the losses so it's a really a downhill spiral where people tend to lose all their money so even if you check the lower end of the graph so if you lose 90 percent in the first year that means you really need to make next year nine times the money just to break even and that's really 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 I'm not going to say impossible, but it's, you have to be really lucky to make these numbers, especially if you had a big loss the previous year. So let's say you were unfortunate enough to go through these losses and you said, Let, what should I do? So let's say you made, I don't know, 50%, 75% loss this year and you're thinking, I'm not going to invest in particular companies i'm not that great at it so i'm just gonna go into the s p 500 because it's a index of the biggest companies in the us and most people who don't want to spend that much time investigating on stocks and minimizing their risk they're just going into that index so if you check the history from uh, 1965 to uh, 2020 the average return on the S&P 500 is around 10%. I think it's around 10.2%. Of course, that means there are going to be years where you made maybe 20%, 30%. And of course, there are, going, there are going to be years where you kind of made a negative 5 10%. So, uh, but on average, if you take the whole lifespan, is 10%. And I know past... Uh, historical data doesn't doesn't mean that future uh, things they're going to follow but at least that's kind of a good basis for us to figure out this so again I just created a few graph uh, another graph to put into perspective how much work goes into this so if if you lost five percent this year well don't worry in a year in the s p if it does an average of ten percent per year you're gonna make it back but if you go, let's say uh, 50, you lost 50%, that means you're going to have to wait eight years to get your money back, just break even. And that doesn't even take into account inflation. And some extreme cases, uh, for example, 25 years, uh, sorry, 25%, if you're at 25% portfolio because you lost 75%, that means 15 years. And let's say, God forbid, you lost 99% of your portfolio and you're only at 1% value. I think I actually calculated this and it would take you literally almost 50 years, 49 to 50 years to just break even. And God, if you even think 2% average inflation per year per, per 50 years, that means 
the amount of money you had at the beginning versus the amount the same amount of money at after 50 years is not going to have the same value so really really i want you guys to pay attention and think about how to minimize your risk when it comes to invest okay guys so we went through why it's important we all understand that if we have a really big loss it's really going to be hard to pretty much get it back and just even be break even. So what should we do in terms of preventing us to go with those type of big losses? And the answer is called a stop loss. A stop loss is pretty much a level uh, or it's pretty much a tool in any type of, in any platform that you invest in that will pretty much specify, okay, if you hit this point uh, and we don't want to go lower it, the software pretty much is going to do it for yourself and is going to take you out. The software has no emotional feelings like us and when it hits that level it's just going to sell our stocks or whatever we invest in and we're going to get our money back minus the loss of course. But it's a really really great tool. It's going to keep us at least in an area that we won't uh, regret it that badly. So in, th in this last chapter, I really wanted to discuss uh, a bit of advice when using stop losses, because uh, I'm just really hopeful that these type of advices I would have been given at the beginning when I started and that would definitely have prevented me to make such big losses that I made in some investments. And I think the first one and the most important one is always figure out, calculate, and place your stop loss before entering a position. And this might not seem that important at this moment, but you have to think about this. All humans were pretty much emotional creatures. Some have better grasp and control over their emotions versus others based on, I guess, genetics, how they were raised, and also experience in the stock market. But always, always, always set a stop loss before investing and keep to it, don't touch it. Because what normally happens for especially beginners that I'm pretty much at fault, we go into a trade and we're like, mm, let me put a stop loss just to be on the safe side. And then the trade go, starts to go lower and lower. And we're, we're really close to hit the stop loss and we're thinking, mm, I don't wanna get out of this now. So I'm gonna reduce my stop loss. And this is going to happen and happen and happen till the losses become lower and lower and lower. So the best advice is pretty much select a stop loss before investing because that's the point where you're going to be the most objective and that's where your emotions aren't going to uh, be as high as after going into a trade. The second rule would be to place a, a stop loss point that will indicate that the trade is wrong, not how much you're willing to lose. Because that are those things are two totally different items. So, pretty much, you have to figure out where's the point where your actual uh, theory that you used to go in is wrong. That doesn't mean how much are you going to stick a, into a trade till you go out. Because those are again totally two different things. So the third rule is understanding volatility. And why is this important? It's because uh, stocks or investments tend to go up and down based on, I guess, feeling. And no stock goes up or doesn't go down uh, like a straight line. It always has these ups and downs, really small ups and downs, but if you actually check the actual plotted line, it kind of has a trajectory. But these small lines will always pretty much be your, could screw up a lot of people because they will take you out of the trade just because your stop loss is hit. So make sure your stop loss is reasonable and also takes into account volatility. Uh, so I guess, let me give you a really good example. So if you're investing in an index fund, uh, these funds don't are not volatile. They're not going to have uh, big increases and decreases per day. So they tend to be around 0 0.5, 0 0.7 of a percent, maybe 0.1. That's like a normal volatility for a index fund. But if we go to crypto, God, crypto could go up and down maybe 10, 15% one day. 
So you have to understand volatility because even if your thesis is right, and yes, at uh, after let's say two months, you kind of reach the point you want to get out because you made the profit, but you were taken out because of your stop loss because uh, you didn't take into account how volatile the investment is. Uh, it, it's gonna hurt, and you're gonna be super upset after a couple of weeks seeing that, yeah, I was right, but the stop loss took me out. So again, pay attention on the volatility and use uh, the stop loss correctly so it won't kick you out without you wanting that. Another piece of advice that I wanted to give you guys and be really careful because there are a lot of people online that talk about the win-lose ratio and they're always saying yeah I'm gonna go into the stock with uh, this amount I'm willing to lose and this is the upside. Uh, you really have to be careful when you actually I guess create these type of numbers and ratios. If you have to you have to take into your calculations the probability of that happening. So think about this. You can't really just say I'm going to risk 20% um, here for an upside of, I guess, 60%. So that means a win-loss ratio of um, 1 to 3. And it, it sounds really awesome because you're willing to lose one part uh, and you're w for winning three parts because you have 20% under and 60% over. But everybody that tells you guys on the internet these ratios, they never think about the probability, right? There's a, a way bigger probability of a stock. It, just think about volatility. A stock could go up and down 20%. That has a probability. But the stock going down 60% or going up 60% has a lower probability because it's just based on the stock, right? So think about an, any index fund, right? It could go down 1% tomorrow or it could go up 1% tomorrow and that has a high probability. Do you think that the index fund is going to go up tomorrow 3%? Pretty much go back in history, right? Check all the days in that index fund and see how many days it went up or down 1% and see how many days it went up or down 3%. And you're going to calculate, we have 365 days, calculate the maximum days that it went up or down 1%, maximum days that it went up or down 3%, and you're going to be astounded. The probability of that 3% upside is going to be much lower. So every time you hear somebody talking about, yeah, I'm going to go in with this win-lose ratio, make sure you know the probability, especially on the win side. Because people just tend to throw numbers and they don't really understand that the bigger the ratio of winning sometimes is the, uh, has a lower probability. I'm not saying that all of them are wrong, but most of them really kind of need to think about the actual probability of that happening. And the last bit of advice, guys. Let's say you found the stock you want to invest, but... Volatility, volatility is quite hard to grasp and you're not sure. Well, don't worry. There's always a tool that we have. It's called staggered loss or a staggered stop loss. That means you kind of figure out smaller stop losses within a big stop loss. So a normal stop loss, you just say, I'm going to go out at this point, let's say minus 20%. If you hit it, you're going to sell all your stocks and we're done. But let's say you kind of don't know the volatility of this company because, well, it's a new company. So how are we going to figure out how volatile it's going to be in the future? Yes, we could check other companies in the industry, but let's say you're not sure and you want to be extra safe, which I'm always a big fan of. So we have a stagger stop loss. So you don't, you're not going to put one stop loss. You're going to put multiple, but you're every single smaller stop loss, you're going to sell a specific amount of stocks within your portfolio. So let's say you have only one company that you invested and you have 100 stocks, uh, 100 Unix stocks. So we're going to put five stop losses and then for every stop loss you hit, uh, we're going to sell, for, for example, the first one we're going to sell 5% of our uh, stocks, and the next one we're going to sell 
50% and the last one we're gonna sell the last 45% so using this method if it's gonna hit the last stop loss well at least you manage to sell a bit of your uh, stocks before hitting this lower point so at the end of the day if you know that stock had gone down because your trade was wrong and that normally happens to all of us at least you managed to uh, limit your losses and that's all good because at the end of the day we cannot stop all our losses it's that's the nature of the beast but if we manage to limit our losses and try to protect our upside that's at the end of the day that's all what it matters it matters that we profit and we profit consistently I'm not a big fan of people investing all their money into one idea, one stock, or one crypto. They make a lot of money, which is sometimes happens because they're lucky. And then let's see where they are five years down the line, where they go into these risky super 10x, 5x investments, and they lose all their money. The whole point for us is being consistent and using the compound effect of year after year, getting those high returns and i think that would be it guys thank you so much i really really hope you guys take this to heart and understand how to minimize your risk and if you manage to understand risk figure it out limit it and use all the tools you have available to minimize your losses then pff, that's pretty much 90 percent you're there to get financial freedom if you understand this concept the upside it's all up to you guys well have a great day Hope you guys stay safe. I really hope this video helped you guys. Take care.